Let us pray. God, our lives are just so full. Help us to empty ourselves. Help us to be empty. May there be more of you and less of me in the things that I say. And may your story become our story. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, the story of Good Friday is a story of loss. It may seem a little odd to call loss a good thing, but we call it Good Friday because we know how the story ends. That from our sense of loss and despair, tremendous good is gifted to us all. But before the healing and the hope and the miracle of Sunday, this enduring story compels us to journey together through Friday, to name our loss, to remember our loss, to be present to our loss, that we may also name our hope, that we may remember our hope and be present to the hope of new life that we find in Christ. The first story we read this morning is the story of Judas. It is the story of the one who betrays. It is the story of the one who is overcome by evil and hands Jesus over to be tortured and crucified. It is the story of perhaps the most loathed human being in all of history. And yet, it is also our story. Judas loved Jesus. And Judas was loved by Jesus. Betrayal only comes from those we love. Enemies don't betray us. They act as we expect them to. They may be cruel and unkind and act against us, but that is what we expect. Betrayal comes from those we love, from those who love us, from those whom we expect care and kindness and encouragement and support. Judas was one of the 12 most trusted friends of Jesus. The gospel tells us that he was the treasurer of their group, the one who was entrusted with their finances, he was surely held in high regard. And yet Judas betrayed Jesus, just like we all do. I know I have betrayed Jesus many times. There are many times when I have turned from the path of truth, what I believe to be the path of righteousness because of my own ignorance or because of fear, because of my grief, and sometimes even because of my best intentions. But there are also times when I, when I know exactly what I'm doing, and I choose to be selfish and greedy and prejudiced and unkind. There are times when I do not want to forgive. There are times when I do not want to love. There are times when I become disappointed or angry with God because I am disappointed and angry with my own life or disappointed and angry with the world and I need to blame someone. Things aren't working out the way I wanted and someone needs to be held accountable. Someone needs to pay. I wonder if this is how Judas felt. Surely he had high hopes for this Jesus project. Like the other disciples, he undoubtedly gave up much in order to follow the call of Christ. He had laid aside his own hopes and dreams to follow this itinerant rabbi, but things had obviously not 
turned out the way he expected, the way he had hoped. His dream, perhaps, was for Israel to be restored. He thought Jesus was going to be the kind of Messiah to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. But through the actions of Jesus, perhaps Judas realized that that was not to be. Maybe he had lost hope. Perhaps Jesus, perhaps Judas had lost faith. And he is not alone. Surely we too know what it is like to lose hope in Christ, to lose faith in God. I know I do. When I was younger, I think my faith in God was more like my faith in Santa. You know, God has this list of all the good people and all the bad people. And if you are good, you will be blessed and God will give you good things. And if you are bad, you'll get what's coming to you. But as I grew older, I discovered that bad things happen to good people. And sometimes it seems that those who lie and cheat and steal, well, they get away with it. And so just like I abandoned my faith in Santa, I also abandoned my faith in God. But of course, as I grew older, I discovered that the God I used to have faith in never actually existed. And is certainly not the God that Jesus talks about in the gospel stories. I discovered that I had to lose my faith in order to find my faith. And I believe it is a journey that we all must go on. We must abandon this idea that faith in God will protect us from pain, from fear, from grief, from brokenness. In fact, when we read the Gospels well, we discover that, that often the life of faith can lead us towards grief and pain and brokenness. Because by following Jesus, this is where he leads us. Through the darkest of valleys, so that we may walk alongside those in most need. Losing our faith is necessary in order to find faith. Jesus was not the Messiah that Judas was hoping for. Jesus is not the Messiah that the world is hoping for. Jesus is not the Messiah that I was hoping for. But he is the Messiah that I need, the Messiah that the world needs. We just need to be willing to lose our faith in the God we want in order to discover faith in the God that we need. For all who have betrayed God, for all who have lost their faith, this story is for you. Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends. He had been there from the beginning. Peter was one of those who left their nets by the side of Lake Galilee in order to follow Jesus. Peter was the one who would always speak up, who always asked the dumb question, who had the courage to offer the wrong answers. Peter was the one who stepped out of the boat Peter was the one who drew his sword to defend Christ. He was one of the inner circle. Jesus seemed to confide in him. He went on to become one of the key leaders in the early church. Historians claim that he was the first bishop of Rome. And yet, here in this story, he denies Jesus. And in doing so, if Judas's story was a loss of faith, Peter's story is the loss of self. 
But just like Judas's story is our story, so too is Peter's. For all too often, we too are warming ourselves by the fire in the courtyard, within earshot of Jesus being tortured. And when asked if we are a follower, we deny knowing him. And by doing so, we are, of course, denying ourselves, denying who we are. We are supposed to be disciples. We are supposed to be followers. But all too often, we are merely bystanders, merely spectators, anonymous and indifferent, wondering what all of us is about. Make no mistake, ignoring the cries of the tortured will not make the torture stop. Ignoring victims of injustice will not give rise to justice. Ignoring the lies of the powerful will not bring about truth. Ignoring the darkness will not create light. For those of us who have chosen the way of Christ, when we continue to ignore the call of Jesus from the courtyard, we are not just betraying him not just denying him, but we are denying our very selves. We have forgotten who we are. Friend, the world demands us to be different. In Matthew's account of this event, those warming themselves by the fire recognize Peter's accent. And that is why they ask if he is a disciple. I wonder, does our accent betray us? In other words, when we speak, does the world think that we sound like a disciple? And if so, if we are saying all the right things, does our behavior follow? For surely to be a true disciple of Jesus, we would not be warming ourselves by the fire while Jesus is being mocked and tortured and prepared for crucifixion. Surely a true disciple of Jesus would not stand by warming themselves by the fire while the homeless are ignored and the lonely are forgotten and the poor go hungry. Surely not. There is a place for us in this story. We are the ones who are called to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. We are the ones who are called to make a difference in this world. And so for all who have lost their way, for all who have lost themselves, this story is your story. When Mary stood at the foot of the cross, her sense of loss must have been overwhelming. Is there a greater sorrow than a parent who loses a child? And to lose a child in such a horrific way, betrayal, injustice, torture, crucifixion. The story of Judas is the loss of faith. The story of Peter is the loss of self. The story of Mary is the loss of love. To open oneself to the possibility of love is to open oneself up to the inevitability of loss. For all love comes to an end. It is simply a matter of time. Some love comes to an end simply because something that we have done or endured, a betrayal, a grief, a misjudgment, or perhaps even a growth or a movement. Something has changed us 
such that love could not be sustained. Sometimes love comes to an end because of something that was done by the other. Again, a betrayal or a grief or a misjudgment, a growth or a movement, something has changed in them. Sometimes love ends because someone has died. It doesn't mean that you stop loving the person who has died, but it does mean that your love is not returned, at least not in the way that it used to be. Sometimes love ends because something inside of you dies. You are not capable of loving that same person in the same way anymore, not in the way that you used to, not in the way that they want you to. Every time we enter into a relationship where we choose to love, we are also choosing the grief of that love ending. In the end, we do so because we believe that love is worth the grief. Christians believe there is a love, however, that never ends. The love that God has for us. This love never ends because God never ends. And this is the love that we see in Jesus. But for everyone who has endured the grief that happens when love ends, for all who have experienced the loss of love, this story is for you. In the synoptic tradition, the last words on Jesus' lips are a forlorn and despairing cry for someone who has experienced great loss. Alohi, Alohi, Lama Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus knows the loss of faith. Faith in a God who always protects and always makes sure nothing bad happens. Jesus knows the loss of self. He could feel every ounce of himself emptying with every drop of blood. Jesus knows the loss of love. For the cross is the most loveless place on earth. And so for all who have endured heartache and pain, brokenness and fear, doubt and regret, abandonment and abuse, Jesus joins with you. And his promise is this. You are not alone. But friend, bear with me. For this day is not the end. This day is not the last day. Today is Friday and the sky is dark and the pain is insufferable and it seems as though all is lost. But it isn't. Today is Friday, but Sunday is coming. 